Reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Oh, 
Throughout Advent, we invited God to be Emmanuel, God with us. We asked that God would bring peace, hope, joy, and love. Today, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Here in the valley of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a Messiah comes. And on this Christmas Eve, we hail him. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace, for he shall reign forever and ever. Let us pray. Holy God of love, there is light in our lives because of the abundance of your steadfast love, a love so vast, so deep, so real, that you became one of us. Bring us into the wonder of your presence and fill us with that light. May we live within the power of this great love and may we share its light with a world that lives in too much shadows. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem, Jesus the Christ, amen. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter two. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. On this day, we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ, your Son, yourself in human form. We celebrate the Son of God. We are transfixed by the story of Jesus. We looked for a warrior. You sent a baby. We looked for royalty. You were born to peasants. 
We looked for power. You showed us meekness. We looked among rulers and politicians. You were found among cattle and shepherds. We looked for military victory. You gave us resurrection. We looked for riches. You gave us selflessness. We looked for a king. You gave us a servant. We worship Jesus, the humble hero of God's redemption story. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter two, part two. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Growing up, I was given a Viewmaster as a child. For those of you who don't know what a Viewmaster is, it's, it's this. Simple device, disc with pictures in it, 
You put the disc in, point it to the light, and look through it, advancing it by pressing down the button. Hours of entertainment right here. But my Viewmaster was more than just entertainment. It came with a variety of slides of pictures of various places throughout the world. As a child, if I wanted to go see the Great Wall of China, pop in a disc, look through the Viewmaster. Want to see Great Pyramids? No problem. The Viewmaster is there to help. Interested in the Eiffel Tower? Just take a look. I grew up thinking that because I'd seen them, all these various places, I knew them. As an adult, I've been fortunate to travel to all of these places. Last year at this time, I had just returned from a trip to Egypt, where I stood at the base of the Great Pyramids. I traveled to Luxor in the Valley of the Kings. I went into the tombs of the pharaohs. And as I stood there at these different locations in the, in the presence of these great sites, I found my senses overloaded. I felt the grandeur. I was overwhelmed. It was quite an experience. I left having a new perspective, a greater understanding. But above all, the experience, it had an impact upon me. Something a viewmaster can't provide. When the angel tells the shepherds that a savior the Messiah is born, and a multitude of the heavenly host praises God. The shepherds were not satisfied with just hearing about the birth. They wanted to see it for themselves, to know more about what the angel had told them. They say to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing. This thing. That's about the extent of their understanding. This thing. Do you know when we use the word thing? When we can't come up with an accurate word, a more pointed word, when we can't find the right word. I wonder if that's what the Volkswagen manufacturer was thinking when they created a car called the thing. But here we have the shepherds, they're off to go see the thing. Letting their imaginations run wild, I imagine, filling their heads with all sorts of ideas of what this thing is all about. But the shepherds are not the only ones who approach the Christ with vague notions. Many today celebrate this season having never left their proverbial fields. They stay away from Bethlehem, away from the manger, away from the Christ. They're satisfied with what they've heard about this thing, although I imagine that what they've heard is not accurate. And yet they never go for themselves to see the Christ, to understand what this thing is all about. Never coming before him, never receiving God's gift, never living in grateful response. It's as though the people are content with experiencing the world's greatest event through a, a viewmaster. But that's how many people live today and celebrate this season. They hear the noise but they never leave the fields of safety and familiarity. Oh, they really hang tight to what is familiar and safe, like their thoughts, their beliefs, their lives, their 
routines. Sounds like viewmaster living to me. You see this thing, but you never know this thing. You never have the experience of meeting Christ Jesus. You continue to hang out in those fields away from the real action. The shepherds didn't celebrate and understand until they left their fields, went to Bethlehem, and saw the child. They left the familiar. They left their routines. They left the safety of their fields with their flocks. They risked their livelihood, all to know and experience this thing. But when you stay behind, that's what happens. You miss out in knowing and experiencing this thing. So what is this thing? It is more than the birth of a baby. In Christ, we learn what it means to be human. Though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, being born in human likeness. See, in the birth, the Son of God emptied himself of his divinity. Jesus held nothing back. He clung to nothing, and nothing served to protect him from the world. He was exposed and vulnerable to be human, Jesus gave up being God. He came into this world vulnerable and helpless as an infant. That's what it means to be human. For us to claim the poverty of the human spirit, we must see the face of a transcendent God. Right? A transcendent God. One who is truly other beyond human limits, beyond human knowledge, who out of love for us and by his release became human. God draws near to us. God does that in the birth of Jesus. And when God draws near, the glow of our humanity shines even more brightly before us because God brightens our true greatness as human beings. It is in his birth we begin to realize the gift we have received. We come to learn of our own value to God. That out of everything, God became nothing. That's how much God loves you and values you. But you won't know that. Hanging out in the safety of your own fields. Away from the manger. Away from the Christ child. No, this Christmas... It's time that you did something different. You need to go to the manger. You need to behold this transcendent God who gives it all up to be God with us. That's when your celebrations will stop being just a bunch of noise and turn into praise. That's when you stop living life through a view master and begin living as a human. That's when this will become more than a thing we celebrate and become a fuller understanding of Christ, of God's love for you. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the journey to the Christ child. Amen. Oh.
Reading from the Gospel of John. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus.
reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praise to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. A child is born this night, a son given for us. This night we celebrate. Let us go and draw near to God. Let our journey begin. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 